Okay, this sermon is entitled, Bill Weiss and Mary Kay Baxter will go to the real hell. Let's open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 28 reads, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if, I, if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications, when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked, and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Now, the subtitle of this sermon could be False Visits to Hell, or Visits to Hell Exposed. Because there are lots of charlatans and quacks and pikers out there that are just telling people that they went to hell and back. And they've written books about this so-called experience. Or they put up videos on YouTube where they claim that they went to hell. And then somehow they got out of hell, which is not biblical. And then they're saying that basically you have to live a certain way to not go to hell. See, these people are all teaching a works-based salvation. They have a, like a, a clandestine secret agenda to try to deceive everybody. And specifically right now I'd like to talk about two people. Bill Weiss. He wrote the book 23 Minutes in Hell. And then Mary Kay Baxter wrote A Divine Revelation of Hell. And both of these people are going to hell. They're going to the real hell. Okay? Despite their stupid, phony crock of an experience they had, these people are going to the real hell because, number one, they believe another gospel. I, I was listening to... I've read the book by Bill Weiss. I've read the whole book. And if you watch some of his videos, he, he says that you have to repent of your sins. He even said one time in one of his videos that believing in Jesus was not enough. Now, anyone who says that is lost because the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. How can you say it's not enough when, when the verse that, that says believe proclaims that you have eternal life? See, when people say stuff like that, it proves they're spiritually blind. They're not saved. You can't read John 3.16 and believe the verse and then think believing's not enough. It's not possible to believe that. It makes no sense. So these people are lost and they're teaching a works-based salvation. And Bill Weiss is going to die in his sins and go to the real hell and he's going to burn forever. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to be for 23 minutes. It's going to be for all eternity. Because he rejects the clear gospel message of salvation by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. Mary Kay Baxter, in her book, it's all about people who lost their salvation. When you can't lose salvation. The Bible says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Once you're saved, you're saved forever. You are preserved. You're going to heaven no matter what. So both of these, these false prophets and, or prophetess, you know, believe in a false gospel, another gospel. They're, they believe in a works-based salvation. And Mary Kay Baxter's going straight to hell when she dies as a reprobate. The whole book was littered and fraught with works-based salvation. I, re I read at least half of the book a long time ago, and it just kept saying, you have to obey Jesus. It kept disregarding the fact that salvation was by grace. That, that, that wasn't even in the book one time. Or that, you know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That wasn't in the book. I mean, it wasn't letting anyone know how to be saved with regard to the gospel at all. And that's what you get from false prophets. A message that is bereft of the truth. And, he, and here's the number one reason why we know these people are fake. Number one, they teach a work salvation. Number two, we don't need their so-called divine revelation. We don't need 23 minutes in hell. We've got the King James Bible. And the Bible makes it very clear that there are two, there are two destinies, heaven or hell, and it lets us know who's going where. We don't need these stupid false prophets to tell us that there's a hell. And that's what that unsaved Bill Weiss was saying, was that God let, put him in hell for 23 minutes, and then got him out, and then told him, Jesus told him that, I'm, I need you to go out and tell people about this. We don't need Bill Weiss. We've got Jesus himself teaching about hell. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter... That's putting yourself at par with God. Okay? And we don't need that garbage. Okay? In verse 
in the very last verse of Matthew 25, it talk, talks about two places. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now when it says righteous, it's talking about people that are saved and they have God's imputed righteousness. It's not talking about people that are righteous in their own behavior, because that's a works-based salvation. Now, even in John 3, it divides it up into two groups. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's talking about going to hell if you don't believe. Now, do we need some false prophet or some false prophetess who's going to write a stupid novel, basically? It's a, it's a fictional book. They're claiming it, it really happened, but it's not. It's not true and it didn't happen. Do we need them? Or is the Word of God sufficient enough to tell us that there's a heaven and hell? Well, my answer, and pardon the sermosination, is that we don't need them. We, we, the Word of God is enough. And the Bible's very clear. Everyone is a sinner. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He died on the cross for all our sins, past, present, future. He died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, not just the so-called elect like these unsaved Calvinists teach. He died for everyone's sin, sins, and his blood atonement that he made for us at the cross is enough. It's the only way that we're saved. It's the only thing God is going to accept, and he's already accepted it 2,000 years ago. And the Bible says there's one thing we have to do to be saved. And here's how you know who a false prophet is. They will never get this one right. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. If Bill Weiss and Mary Kay Baxter were teaching that and not corrupting and adding to that, then you could maybe take them a little more seriously. But they're not teaching that. They're teaching repent of your sins. Be obedient. Do the works. Don't lose your salvation. They're teaching all this works garbage which tells you they're not of God, they're not saved, and they're going to hell. They're going to see the real hell. Okay, these fake visits to hell are just that. There's a real hell awaiting these two false prophets, and that's the way it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't go to hell if you're saved. And that's what Bill Weiss was saying. He went there, he went to hell as a Christian. Well, no, he, he was not a Christian. He was a false prophet, false brethren, and he didn't go to hell at all. It, 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 it's, it's a, it's a, it's a made-up story. But he is going to the real hell. And he's going to join Mary Kay Baxter and anyone else who, who teaches a works-based salvation. They're all going to hell. So that's all I have. We need to watch out for these false prophets. The reason why I did this sermon is because I'm so sick of people being sucked into this stuff and duped by it, thinking that, that it's legit. When you hear somebody say they had a visit to hell or they went to hell and now they're out and then they write a book about it, even if they say they, they went to heaven and, and back. Chances are it's garbage. And we need to avoid this stuff because, number one, eternity is not a revolving door. There's no back door. You can't just go into eternity and then come out of it. Go into hell and come out of it. Go, in, go up into heaven and then come back down to earth. It doesn't work that way. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.